Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. Throughout the EU and across the world, democratic nations use many different kinds of election systems. These can be quite complex and sometimes lead to results that people consider unfair. So with elections coming in several EU countries, we thought it was a good idea to start a series where we compare some of the main electoral systems, discussing their functioning as well as the pros and cons. With Dutch national elections closing in, let's start with the Netherlands and their system of proportional representation with party lists. As I mentioned, this video is set to be part of a series on European elections and the electoral systems that underpin them. So if you want to be updated when we release more videos in this series, as well as a bunch of other interesting European content from us, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. And don't pretend like you already have, because I can see that most of you haven't. Anyway, thank you so much for your support. Proportional representation, the system used by the Dutch, is on the surface a relatively straightforward system. Essentially, if a party receives 25% of the votes in the country, they get 25% of the seats. Seats of Parliament are therefore not assigned to a specific region or particular part of the electorate. To get one, all you need is enough votes from the electorate as a whole. For example, the Dutch lower house has 150 seats. To win one of them, you therefore need 1 150th of the votes cast. That's it. Calculations can get a little tricky though when it comes to rounding off the amount of votes received to distribute the last few seats. In the Netherlands, this issue is resolved by the so-called de Haunt system. First, you divide the total number of votes cast by the number of available seats. The result of this calculation is the electoral divisor. Then you count for each party how many times this electoral divisor fits fully into the total number of votes the party got. So let's say that party A got 40 million, B 15 million and C 5 million. The electoral divider is calculated by dividing the 60 million votes cast by the 150 available seats, which equals 400,000. All we have to do now is divide the number of votes that each party got by 400,000 and always round down. Thus, party A will get 100 seats, B will get 37 and C will get 12. This, however, leaves us with one final seat to assign. The party that gets the seat is the one who, on average, has the most votes per seat. Specifically, we divide the total number of votes received by a party by the number of seats that those votes yielded. This tells us which party was closest to getting the final seat. In our example, that was party C. Thus, this is the final result of this hypothetical election. The main positive from this PR system is fairness. Democracy is built on a principle of representation, which means that the people in power should represent the opinion of the electorate. So if people in a country are majority conservative, the composition in parliament should reflect that accordingly. In this regard, PR scores very well, as the division of seats almost exactly follows the political preference of the people. Another advantage is that smaller parties have a greater chance of coming into power. With the first-past-the-post system, smaller parties have very little chance of getting into parliament, whereas in a PR system, absolute majorities are very rare. In fact, no party in the Netherlands has ever received 76 or more seats out of the total 150. With these smaller parties, the larger parties are kept in check, as they're forced to cooperate with someone to form a coalition. There's also likely to be more stability within the parties, as different groupings can, if they really want to, split off. In the first-past-the-post system, the group breaking away would have almost no shot of winning, dwarfed by the party they were departing from. In PR, the representatives still have a good shot of getting back into power under their new unified banner. This means that new parties can form and prevents the fractured parties that we see in countries like the UK. Tying into this example, coalition forming is often considered one of the biggest pluses of proportional representation. When no party is allowed to do whatever it wants but is forced to cooperate, the political arena moderates and becomes more stable. If parties have to cooperate, they're less likely to be hostile to each other, and the political landscape does not switch back and forth every couple of years. 
To those of you in majoritarian countries, the idea of constant coalitions might sound nightmarish. So if you'd like us to explain practically how European countries cope with endless coalitions, then like this video and comment below to let us know and we might discuss it in more detail in another video. Expanding on this, PR systems might be considered a very useful tool against polarisation. As we pointed out, PR systems tend not to generate two large parties that oppose each other greatly. With parties becoming so big they can essentially govern on their own, despite the fact that many, even within their own party, might not agree on even the most essential political topics. With politics not so clearly split in two, and smaller parties able to start on their own, the electorate isn't forced to choose between two vastly different parties, and polarisation is less likely. However, some could argue that proportional representation definitely isn't the ideal way to run a democracy. The first argument they could use is that smaller parties being brought into power isn't actually a positive thing. Political parties usually require mass support, and under a majoritarian system, they have to appeal to their base, but also the centre ground of floating voters. Under a proportional system, smaller parties can just appeal to extremes and still exert influence and power. For example, in the UK, despite having a base of right-leaning supporters, UKIP failed to ever gain any significant power. Which, to some, is an advantage of Britain's majoritarian system, as UKIP weren't able to grab power as they never appealed to a broad range of voters, just a specific group. As a result, majoritarian parties tend to be more moderate, as they have to have a broad appeal, and as such, they don't need to make big compromises when they gain power. In a proportional system, a large range of parties with big differences in their beliefs will have to compromise and put forward a plan that appeals to many people. So, while the individual parties might be more differentiated, ultimately they end up having to compromise, often in the form of coalition. And as they say, a coalition is a government that no one voted for. Another problem is the unwieldiness of the process. That's because the party list system produces an ungodly ballot paper, due to all of the parties and candidates from parties needing to be listed. Having such a complex voting system looks great from a theoretical standpoint, but for those who don't dedicate a huge proportion of their time to politics, it can present quite an obstacle to those who just want to be casually involved. Not only this, but a third big argument against proportional representation is related to how everyday citizens are impacted by the system. This is the argument that the link between a constituency and the MP will be lost. In the majoritarian system, an MP will represent an area known as a constituency. In a PR party list system, the nation is treated as one big constituency, and it's not always immediately clear who actually represents you. Another problem that one might have with the PR system relates to predictability. Since you're not actually voting for a government, but instead for your parliament, and because parliament is split into so many different smaller parties, there's no knowing who will actually end up in government. Although it's very common that the leader of the largest party will put forward the prime minister, just like Mark Rutter, the leader of the party that won the previous elections in the Netherlands, you don't know who the ministers will be, nor the parties that will be in the governing coalition, so you don't really know what the government's policy will be until the coalition is formed after the negotiations. And these negotiations can take forever. They took 225 days in the Netherlands back in 2017. And because of all of this, you might feel that it matters very little who you actually vote for. After all, the negotiations will end up putting the direction of government policy somewhere in the middle of what all of the governing parties wanted, sometimes sacrificing their own plans or going back on their policies. Perhaps not a good thing if you want to increase people's trust in politics. This critique has been particularly strong since the leader of the Dutch party, Forum for Democracy, coined the term party cartel. The word cartel might not be entirely appropriate, as it implies some kind of secret agreement among politicians that they're just going to do whatever they like. You could certainly make a solid argument that the entire system seems to just be a carousel of public figures who end up in power because of some sort of coalition agreement that's reached regardless of the electoral results. Plus, state bureaucracy might become too powerful as a consequence. 
Because politics are unlikely to drastically change, but instead are more likely to just stick in the middle ground, it allows the bureaucracy to just keep on doing whatever they were doing before. Dutch viewers will know of the recent scandal that surrounds the National Tax Department, who's been branding many innocent parents as fraudsters for years, without anyone really knowing or checking. So that's proportional representation for you. What do you think? Is PR better or fairer than the majoritarian systems such as First Past the Post? Would a proportional representation system work better for your country than the one you currently have? And if so, why? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As for more European countries which are having elections this year, we'll be looking at their systems too, so stay tuned and be sure to subscribe for updates. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.